Hello and welcome to lecture 8 of our course on stochastic modeling of biological processes. In this lecture, we will start with our discussion of chapter 3. We will introduce stochastic differential equations from the computational point of view and present several examples to illustrate their computational definition, which is used throughout our course. The rest of chapter 3 will be covered in the following three lectures. They are labeled as lectures 9, 10, and 11. Stochastic differential equations will be abbreviated as SDEs in this course, or as an SDE if it is used as a singular. A stochastic differential equation is, roughly speaking, an ordinary differential equation with an additional noise term describing stochastic fluctuations. Models with noise terms are useful in many biological applications and they can be introduced in many different ways. In the mathematical literature, stochastic differential equations are often studied using a definition theorem proof approach. While such theoretical SDE courses are taught in Oxford, they are not a prerequisite of our course. Therefore, we do not assume that students know what a stochastic differential equation is. Moreover, complex models in the biological literature are often formulated as computer programs. In this course, we will be taking the middle ground between these two approaches. We will formulate stochastic differential equations using a finite time step delta t. The advantage of our approach is that we will be able to both analyze the properties of these models and relate them with computer programs. The course is taught in the Mathematical Institute and we do care about the underlying mathematics, but there is relatively limited time in this course, so we cannot take a more rigorous approach. Students interested in a more mathematical treatment of SDEs can take other specialized courses. Here, I would like to make an analogy with ordinary differential equations. In Oxford, ODEs are introduced rigorously, starting with Picard's existence theorem. Such a theorem is useful for proving existence and uniqueness of solutions. But it is not helpful when we want to plot solutions of specific ODEs. To that end, there are some follow-up courses on numerical methods for solving ODEs. However, nothing really stops us from inverting this approach. We could also start with a numerical method for solving ODEs and consider it as our definition of ODEs. This is what we effectively do in this course with stochastic differential equations to avoid unnecessary theory. So we start with this ODE analogy. Consider first a variable x as a function of time, which evolves according to this ordinary differential equation. Intuitively, this OD specifies the infinitesimal change of the x variable in the infinitesimally small time interval of length dt. So we could rewrite this as equation 3 3. This equation can be used as a simple way to compute the solution of the original ODE. We choose a small time step delta t and we compute the value of x at time t plus delta t from the value of x at time t by this formula. What we have written here is effectively the forward Euler numerical method for solving ordinary differential equations. It is the most basic explicit method for numerical integration of ODEs. Considering this equation as our computational definition of this ordinary differential equation, we can write the computational definition of a stochastic differential equation by adding a random term to it, which I highlighted here in red. This equation tells me how I can compute the value of x at time t plus delta t from the value of x at time t. I use a random number, xi, which is sampled from the normal distribution with the zero mean and unit variance. Such random numbers can be obtained using the function randn in MATLAB. 
I multiply this random number by the square root of the time step delta t and by the strength of the noise which is given by this function g. This stochastic differential equation can be formally written in the following form. Where dw is white noise, w stands for the so-called Wiener process. If you wanted to provide more rigorous mathematical treatment of stochastic differential equations, we would have to define dw, which would require a formal definition of stochastic integration. However, for the purposes of our course, it is sufficient to assume that the meaning of this formula SDE36 is given by the corresponding computational definition 3.5. In fact, this is all we need to know to simulate stochastic differential equations numerically. Consequently, whenever we write SDEs in the form 3.6, we understand them in terms of the computational definition 3.5. That is, we replace dw by the product of the square root of delta t and the random number xi, which is sampled from the normal distribution with zero mean and unit variance. In the numerical literature, equation 3.5 is called the Euler-Maruyama numerical method for solving this SDE. Our computational definition can be directly used to simulate the time evolution of x. All we need to choose a small time step delta t and apply the computational definition 3.5 iteratively. The resulting algorithm is given as algorithm A6B6 in the lecture notes. First, we generate a normally distributed random number xi, and then we use equation 3.5 to compute x at time t plus delta t from the value of x at time t. Let us apply this algorithm to our first example, given as equation 3.7. It is a simple SDE where f is 0 and the noise strength g is equal to 1. To compute a few illustrative realizations, we choose a small time step delta t and replace dw by the product of the square root of delta t and the random number xi. And then we apply the algorithm A6B6. The results of six realizations are presented in figure 31a. They all start with the same initial condition that x at time 0 is equal to 0. The dashed line denotes the average over many stochastic realizations. It is equal to 0. Another example is presented in figure 31b where the stochastic differential equation is the SDE321, written here. We again calculate six illustrative stochastic realizations, starting from the same initial condition, that x at time 0 is equal to 0. To do that, we use our computational definition, and we replace dw with the product of the square root of delta t and the random number xi. The dashed line again denotes the average over many stochastic realizations. Examples of SDEs in section 3.2 illustrate that our computational definition 3.5 can be used to write computer codes calculating the behavior of SDEs. But our definition also enables some mathematical analysis. Taking this term xt on the left hand side and dividing by delta t, we can rewrite 3.5 as follows. If g is 0, then the noise term is missing, so we do not have this red term in the equation, and there is nothing stochastic in the model. If we pass to the limit delta t goes to 0, then we obtain the time derivative of x on the left hand side, and we derive the ordinary differential equation 3, 1. If g is not identically equal to 0, then we observe that the formal limit delta t goes to 0 is problematic in this red term. If delta t goes to 0, then the factor multiplying the random number xi is going to infinity. This is not so surprising because we have already observed that the computed realizations looked very fractal, with a lot of fluctuations. They didn't look differentiable. So if we attempt to calculate their derivatives by passing delta t goes to 0 in this equation, we obtain infinities. 
In particular, we do not pass delta t to 0 in equation 3, 5. However, we can still pass to the limit delta t goes to 0 in equations describing the time evolution of expectations, calculating the mean, variance, covariance, and other moments. In this way, we can derive the corresponding ordinary differential equations for these deterministic predictable quantities. I will show such an example on the next slide. If g is not identically equal to 0, then we cannot formally write the derivative of x on the left hand side as we did in the case of the OD31. So we write the SDE formally in this form 3, 6. Consider our example SDE 3, 7. Using our computational definition 3, 5, it can be rewritten in the following form. The mean is defined as expectation of x. To calculate an equation for mean, we take expectation of both sides of this equation. On the left hand side, we obtain the mean at time t plus delta t. The expectation of the first term on the right hand side is the mean at time t. And the expectation of the second term is zero because psi is normally distributed with zero mean. In particular, we obtain a very simple evolution equation for mean. It stays the same at each time step. Since the initial mean at time zero was equal to zero, we can conclude that the mean is equal to zero at all times. In some examples, we will analyze SDs by deriving ordinary differential equations for expectations. In this case, we could put mt on the left hand side and divide by delta t. Passing to the limit delta t goes to zero, we obtain that the time derivative of mean m is equal to zero. We can repeat a similar calculation for the variance. We start with equation 3, 8, raise both sides to the second power and calculate expectations to obtain that the variance at time t plus delta t is equal to the variance at time t plus delta t. Rearranging and passing to the limit delta t goes to zero, we obtain the following ordinary differential equations for the variance. In exercise 3.3, you can practice such calculations for our second example SDE given by equation 3.21. Similar techniques will also be useful for more complicated SDEs later. Our final example of an SDE is given as SDE 3.26. It has five parameters, one of them is K5, which is the constant strength of the noise. If K5 is zero, then this SDE reduces to the following ordinary differential equation with a cubic polynomial on the right hand side. I have chosen these four parameters K1, K2, K3 and K4 so that this ODE has two stable steady state, one at 100 and the other one at 400, with an unstable steady state between them at 250. Figure 3.1d shows the time evolution computed by both the SDE for non-zero K5 and by this ODE. We observe stochastic switching of the blue trajectory. This is qualitatively the same behavior as we observed in the chemical system to one in chapter two. In the next lectures, we will discuss mathematical approaches which will help us to get good estimates of some important characteristics of this SDE. For example, we will show how we can estimate the mean switching time between the two favorable states of the system. The mean switching time will depend on the strength of the noise, on the parameter K5. If K5 is zero, then there is no switching at all. If K5 is very small, then it can take a lot of time before we observe a switch from one state to the other. Comparing these two figures, we observe the similar switching behavior. In our chemical system to one, the noise is not controlled by a single parameter and the noise has different strength at different favorable states. However, 
if we can get a good estimate of the size of the noise in the system, then some theory developed for this SDE will also be applicable to stochastic chemical systems. We will return to this in lecture 11. This brings me to the end of lecture 8. Today we have discussed the beginning of chapter 3 covering section 3.1 where we have introduced SDEs from the computational point of view and section 3.2 where we have discussed some examples of SDEs. Please read pages 60 to 66 of the lecture notes before watching the video of lecture 9. In our next lecture we will continue in our discussion of chapter 3 introducing the Fokker-Planck equation. Thank you for listening to lecture 8 of our course on stochastic modeling of biological processes. Bye-bye.